come with me today and we've got a 2011 Mercedes Vito van with a couple of Falcos. Now this van has done 325,000 miles and it's still on the original DPF. Anyway, let's have a little look. We have got a P2600 coolant pump as an electrical fault or open circuit and the suck content of the diesel particulate filter is too high. Now as you can see a lot of them fault codes are going to be because I've got the airbox disconnected. Now the component that's going to be causing all this grief is going to be that little bugger there and that is the control valve for the water pump it is vacuum operated and uh, it's very very simple to diagnose we'll get into it now now there's only two wires going to this little solenoid uh, and as you can see we've got 12 volts if we swap that wire over now we can see if it's being controlled by the ecu now if we jump onto the scanner and go into actuation test uh down to coolant pump switch over valve uh, as you can see yeah just watch the multimeter now as I control it with the scanner. You should see it changing. And there we go. It is working as it should. Perfect. Now you can check these out of the vehicle. Uh, if you've got a power probe and what I've used, because the uh, pins inside the plug are ever so thin, I've used some breakout leads. So we've got green and white, and if I put power to it, you should hear it click if it's working obviously as you can tell this one isn't working but we have got a brand new one which is by there and we'll get that tested now now we've got the brand new one coupled up uh, if we put some power to it now you should be able to hear it clicking there you go absolutely perfect now these are very 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 simple to change uh, the pipes you can't get them the wrong way around because they are different sizes as you can see and it takes like a minute or so to put on Put the bottom pipe on. Put the top one on. And so then it clips onto the little metal bracket. Like so. And then you jump around to the bottom and plug the electrical connector back in. Like so. Now just to confirm it, we're going to jump back onto actuation test on the scanner and you should hear for a little click, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it over the buzzing of the engine. Uh, there we go, let's get this all put back together. Now we've jumped into the vehicle, we've cleared all the full codes down and the only one that is coming back now is P246, suck content of the diesel particulate filter is too high. Let's have a little look on live data. Now we've got some live data up, we can see when, how many miles the DPF has done. If we click over there to miles, no, it's not miles, go back to kilometers. And we've got 523,000 kilometers. So it is its original DPF. And as you can see, the fill level of the DPF is 249%. Let's have a look at the pressure in it. Now we're on to the pressure differential in the diesel particulate filter. And as you can see on, on tick over, we've got 10 millibars. Now if we hold it up to 3000 RPM, because of about 80, 90, we know that we have still got a very healthy DPF. Seventy, eighty. Now if we have a little look at some more live data, uh, you can see the distance, uh, the driving distance since last DPF clean, regeneration, was 6,500 kilometers. So that's probably about 3,000 miles. It hasn't had a DPF clean since then. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna clear tell the vehicle that it's had a new DPF I'm going to take it for a little driver rooney now we've reset the DPF if we click read fault codes you can see now we've got no more fault codes stored what we're going to do is take it for a little bit of a test drive now we're out on the road what you need to remember is when you're test driving a vehicle you need to try and drive it as the customer will drive it because your your driving style is not going to be matching theirs and the vehicle will perform differently so try and keep it to how they drive it i live in a beautiful part of the world anyway now we're back in the workshop uh, i've gone through all the live data and everything seems to be perfect uh the fill level the, the back pressure in the exhaust the uh, temperature of the engine everything is as it should do and we've got no fault codes so anyway i am closing this one on a successful diagnose and repair of a mercedes vito anyway let's get a sense